Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 5th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about three tropical weather systems. One of them, Gordon, which is now impacting the U.S. and the region of the Mississippi River Valley. The second, Florence, uh, and you can see Gordon in the satellite shot here swirling over the Mississippi region. Florence, which is a still a mid-Atlantic tropical cyclone, but that has recently achieved major hurricane status, uh, defying model projections, which had, had limit, limited its intensification potential due to a, a good degree of wind shear in the region. And a, a third tropical disturbance coming off the African coast now, which the National Hurricane Center is now indicating is likely to develop into a tropical depression. Just looking at the National Hurricane Center map, we, we see Gordon over land as a tropical depression. Florence in the central Atlantic as a 125 mile per hour major hurricane and a disturbance off the African coast heading toward the west, which has a 70% chance of forming into a tropical depression within the next 48 hours. So the tropical Atlantic is, is really starting to get busy as was indicated by some recent models. Moving back to Gordon, would just like to note that the major story for Gordon continues to be rain with a serious rainfall potential in the range of 4 to 10 inches for, for a number of locations as Gordon begins to interact with a trough dipping down through the central U.S. And it's worth noting that a large region just west of the Mississippi River is expected to receive a serious amount of rainfall over the next five to seven days, as indicated by NOAA, and in association with Gordon's movement over land. And maintenance of, of storms in association with Gordon's high level of tropical moisture. Moving on to Florence. Florence generated a bit of surprise earlier today as it achieved major hurricane status. This statement here from Michael Ventress noting that Florence is the first major hurricane of the 2018 hurricane season at the time with 120 mile per hour sustained winds. And as we could see from the National Hurricane Center update, now still strengthening with 125 mile per hour sustained winds. I'd just like to highlight this quote from Philippe Papin, who notes that it's worth stressing, stressing the unusual nature of a hurricane rapidly intensifying in the face of 20 to 25 knot shear. Yesterday, the National Hurricane Center was forecasting Florence to maintain a 65 knot intensity for 24 hours. Instead, the tropical cyclone is, is now 110 knots, a plus 45 knot change, and and a bit of, a, of an error when it, when it comes to weather forecasting, which according to Pat Penn is a humbling endeavor and I, I certainly sympathize with this sentiment. It's worth noting that Hurricane Florence, according to National Hurricane Center, is projected to move closer and closer to Bermuda. There are some tracks that bring this st storm near Bermuda or perhaps even over Bermuda. There are other tracks that, that have it recurving out into the North Atlantic. And some of the models do bring Florence close to the U.S. East Coast, so, so something to keep an eye on. Now, just to ask the general question, why did Florence strengthen so rapidly? And in all honesty, it's, it's rather hard to, to pin down exactly why. It's worth noting that Florence is moving through a region that is, has, has high moisture loading over the North Atlantic, over the central North Atlantic, with, with very little dry air in sight. 
it was noted that that shear was expected to limit the intensification of the system. It's also worth noting that ocean temperatures in the region are in the range of 80 degrees, which is enough to sustain a, a Category 3 or Category 4 storm if you look at typical climatology when the atmosphere is favorable. It's worth noting that, that Florence is moving into warmer waters and into a region in which sea surface temperatures are much warmer than average. So if sea surface temperatures are, are considered to be the primary limiter for Florence, Florence, Florence's potential intensity is quite high as it moves into this zone, potentially even Category 5 intensity. However, it's worth noting that the National Hurricane Center is forecasting the storm to weaken to just normal hurricane status in the Category 1 or Category 2 range as it moves closer to Bermuda, likely due to possibly more hostile atmospheric conditions. Although it's worth noting that since Florence surprised us, we might want to keep a close eye as at least over the past 24 hours, Florence, Florence's intensification ha has been quite substantial and, 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 and relatively concerning given, given the past forecast. Just to talk about some climate change related indicators, increased atmospheric water vapor and broad increases in ocean surface temperature also increase the peak potential intensity of hurricanes. And it's worth noting that as hurricanes get closer to the United States for the 2018 hurricane season, there's quite a bit of warmer than normal sea, surface, sea surfaces. So there's, there's a potential for, for storms to strengthen if they approach the US, which, which is a bit of a concern. It's also worth noting that the Caribbean has warmed up a bit and the Gulf of Mexico, for the most part, remains above average. The North Atlantic near Africa, however, does remain a bit cooler than average, although not a great deal cooler than average. So, so a good deal of concern considering very warm sea surface temperatures and warmer than normal sea surface temperatures near the United States. And above normal sea surface temperatures are a signature fingerprint of human forced climate change which is primarily driven by fossil fuel burning and if the warming trend continues if human-based carbon emissions and fossil fuel burning continues then unfortunately we will expect to see the peak potential of intensity of storms continue to increase so just an update for the present Atlantic hurricane season based on reports from the National Hurricane Center as well as providing some some information with regards to present overall climate-based trends that can have an influence on extreme weather events. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.